we will finish this topic today peterson solution for critical section problem okay so i guess everyone is uh, have revised this also so that we can understand it better again okay so let's start today's class the topic is peterson solution for critical section problem this is continuation with the previous class that we have on this topic so is people still are coming in the classroom this is so let i guess there is some internet connection issue okay so what is peterson solution this solution is for only two processes uh, in which we are having some concurrent processes that are running and for this what we have uh, we have taken uh, pi and pj process and i is suppose zero then j is one so you can say it p0 and p1 processes okay and then we have seen that we have used to share data first one is int turn and what it denotes int turn variable uh, it gives you the authority to say other process would you like to go to the critical section as you can see here the variable turn indicates whose turn it is to enter its critical section and who will decide whose turn it is as you understand the requirement of that progress in which i told you that those processes which are interested to go in their critical section they will decide who will go next to enter into the critical section as in previous class we have seen that p0 and p1 processes are there so p0 before going entering into its critical section code it uh, ask and put the turn of p1 and ask p1 would you interested to go into the critical section similarly p1 before entering into its critical section ask p0 by putting turn value as i would you like to go to the critical section just like uh, we are having the concept of after you right similar concept is here also so for example if turn equal to i then process pi is allowed to execute in its critical section right so if turn is i then pi is allowed that is suppose i is 0 so if turn is 0 then process p0 is allowed to execute in its critical section and we are having a boolean flag boolean flag what why boolean flag to put either true or false and this flag value is for individual process this flag value is for individual process suppose p0 is interested to go into critical section so p0 flag flag of 0 will be put to as true similarly if pj is it wish to enter its critical section then flag j value will be put to true otherwise it will be false for example if flag i is true this value indicates that pi is ready to enter its critical section and for um, the sake of simplicity if you take i value as 0 then flag of 0 is true this value indicates that pi is ready p0 is ready to enter its critical section and then we have seen this code process pi and process pj and uh, let me again explain you this code once again so we are having this much of setup right previously and you can see here we are having this common variable turn right this common variable turn is for common for process pi and process pj also and then we are having that boolean flag flag i and flag j you can make flag i something like this also because this is an array this is an array you can make something like this this one and then and this is an array right so you can uh, make it something like this flag i and flag j so this is something like this you can say this is an array right so this is like flag 0 this is flag 0 and this is flag 1 index is what flag 1 right for the sake of simplicity i have put flag 0 left hand side for the process pi and flag j in the right hand side for the pj process as you also know that now i is referring to here 0 if you are taking i as 0 then j is what j is what 1 minus i 
and here one minus i is what zero so the value is j is one right if i is equal to zero then j is equal to one minus i that is one minus zero that is one so uh, if i can make it simply one as you get the concept right so i is zero and j is one cool so far so good this is the setup that we are having two shared variable one is flag i means flag either i or j you can take it flag zero flag one we are going to put some values here and then a common variable is turn now let's start with process suppose uh, uh, previous class we have started with process p i let's start with process pj in this class okay suppose like uh, process pj get the first chance to execute this first statement uh, process pj get the chance to execute this statement then what will happen uh, what this statement will do it will set true into the flag j and what is the value of j that is 1 so you will we will put here value as true in this flag okay it's very simple first statement has been executed by process pj and it it's a give a signal to whom to the operating system that i am interested to go into the critical section this is just for giving the signal that you are interested to go into the critical section just like i have given you an analogy that in the classroom if you are interested to speak something or you are interested to go to drink the water you raise your hand in the classroom right so that the teacher in the classroom understand and get a signal that this student wants to say something this is the similar as that flag is to give the signal that you are interested to go into the critical section as you are soon as soon you are putting this flag j value as true you are giving the signal to the operating system that you are interested to go into the critical section this is for process pj only right and then what will happen but before going to the critical section what you will do you will first go with the concept of what after you so as you aware that this process and uh, this solution is for only two processes right so this process pj check with process pi that would you interested to go into the critical section so it will put turn value as i turn value as i so go to the turn variable and put it value as i right so now turn value is i you can put zero also as we have this we have shown you that i is 0 and j is 1 if you are interested to putting the exact value you can write it here there is no issue so what is what is the value of turn now this is i now these two statements are executed by process pj now let's go to this process pi now process pi is also coming to the picture and it has executed its first statement that is flag i is equal to true then what will happen go to the flag i and put value as true now flag i also has given signal that i am also interested to go into the critical section flag i is for giving the signal now again uh, this P process pi is also very mannered process it first check with the process pj would you interested to go into the critical section then what it will do it will put turn of j right by assigning the value of j into the turn now what is this turn this is a memory cell it will hold only one value at a time right so if you are placing value j here then what will happen uh, the next value will be j only because because it will override your previous value so what is the next value of turn this is j only right so far so good are you able to understand what happened here firstly process pi executed it puts its flag as j as true and turn i and then process pi comes into the picture it put a flag i as true and turn as j so it will replace the value of turn memory cell and only j will be there so far so good yes or no we have did nothing we are just executing statements one by one so okay yes so we are good to go so let's move on
now let's see what will happen next now again let's move on to see this process pj now here in process pj what will happen as you see here that we are using logical and operator this is what logical and operator right and uh, this is equal to operator or assignment operator this one is this a equal to operator or assignment operator so equal to very good this is an equal to operator so what is the characteristics of a logical and logical and characteristics is both values that is left hand side and right hand side must be true to give you a one right logical and give you either one or zero in the end by executing all the conditions so firstly check with flag i let's see what is flag i what is the value of flag i flag i value is true so this condition is true right so we will check with second condition is turn equal to i is turn equal to i is this condition is true or false is turn equal to i is this condition true or false tell me is turn value is equal to i true true false. this condition is true better turn value is false. j please see, check here turn value is j not i uh, i guess uh, there is some issue with j is override there let me make it very clear let me make it properly this is j now it is visible now this is visible turn is j because we have yeah, put yes, sir. this statement as j value is going to put in the turn uh, okay so turn value is i this condition is false this condition is false so if any condition is false in logical and then what will happen it will give you zero means condition is false so it will not trap into this infinite loop as you can see here that we are having this semicolon here we are having this semicolon here means it will trap you into an infinite loop if both the conditions are true now we have seen that flag i value as true and turn is not equal to i means the condition is false so what will happen in this case process pj will get the chance to go into the critical section right so process pj is executing into the critical section now what will happen parallelly here now process pi is also try to execute this piece of code so let's check suppose uh, he, uh, process pi is executing this while loop then flag j value is what flag j value is what true or false tell me what is the value of flag j flag j value is what come on tell me true as you can see here flag j value is true, true. now this condition is true let's check the second condition is turn equal to j true or false is turn equal to j true yes it is also true because here we can see here that turn value is j now both the conditions are true right so you will enter into the while loop as you can see here we are not having any curly braces or any other statements into this while loop we are simply having this semicolon now this will engage in just checking the condition again and again that is it is just like an infinite loop kind of thing because both the conditions are what true and it is as good as let me make this remove here if both the conditions are true then what will happen this then what will happen let me make put it here if both the conditions are true then it will return you what one so this is just like as while one as we can write it as while one and this is what and this is what this is an example of a infinite loop am i right while one is an example of infinite loop because we are having semicolon here right do, do you get the concept that this process pi is stuck in a infinite loop and till what time it will stuck in this while loop until and unless any one of the condition is false right so let me put it back here so till 
uh, process PJ is executing in its critical section, process PI is stuck in this infinite loop because here no other statements are there. We are having semicolon. So flag J is true, turn equal to J. And it is keep checking that either flag J is false or turn equal to I, and then we will get the chance to enter into the critical section. And this is the characteristics of that critical section problem. What was the first one? That was the mutual exclusion. What mutual exclusion say? If one process is executing in its critical section, then no other process will be allowed to enter its critical section. Now, you can see here that uh, process PJ is running in its critical section. So process PI is not allowed to enter its critical section. And how we are preventing PI to enter its critical section? We have put it into the busy waiting kind of thing. Means it is just checking the conditions again and again. And the condition is not meeting to let in critical section to process PI. So in this manner, we have implemented mutual exclusion feature of critical section problem. Now let's see what happened once uh, process PJ has finished its critical section. Now process PJ will execute what? This statement. Flag J equal to false, right? As soon as you put flag J as false, where is flag J? Here is flag J. Let's make it false. Let's make this flag J as false. Let's make it as false. The next statement is uh, false. Okay, so now flag J is false. As soon as you put the flag J as false, let's go here. Let's go to this condition. Check flag J is true or false. This PI is executing again and again. And as soon as you put the flag J as false, it is using this flag J also. So what is the flag J right now? True or false? This is false, right? And your first condition is false. So you will not check the second condition. This is the characteristics of a logical end. If your left hand side value is false, you will not check the right hand side value. So if one condition is false, we will good to go that this uh, condition of logical end will return you as zero. So the condition is false. We will not trap in the infinite loop. And then we will enter in critical section. So process PI is enter in critical section now, right? And till time your process PJ is running in the remainder section. And once your process PI finishes its critical section, <clears throat> it will execute this statement that flag I is false. So you can put here flag I as false also, right? So in this manner, what are the next two conditions like progress? Progress is what? That those processes which are running in their critical, uh, which are interested in to enter in critical section are, will decide who will go next. As you can see here, flag I and flag J both are interested to go into critical section. So flag I is deciding that J will go first. And here process PJ is deciding that PI will go first. And the, what is the third one? That is the bounded weight. Bounded weight is there must be a cap that after how much time that one process will get the chance again. As you can see here, if uh, process, P, process PI will get a chance to enter critical section when, when PJ finished its execution, means after one execution of process PJ, PI will get the chance to enter its critical section. Similarly, after one execution of process PI, process PJ will get the chance to enter its critical section. So in this manner, we have implemented all the three features, that is mutual exclusion, progress and bounded word. So in the, in the examination, if you get this question, you have to explain in your own words how this solution is solving the critical section problem by satisfying all these three features. So separately, you have to explain these things, okay? So are we good with this, yes or no? Are you able to understand? Are we done with this? Yes or no? Done, very simple method. You have to go just step by step. Okay, cool. So let's finish this. Let's have some understanding on this. Okay, so we are done with this code. Let's do the analysis that we have discussed. I have write, written down it here so that you can 
revise whenever you want. So to prove that this solution is correct, we need to show that what mutual exclusion is preserved. The progress requirement is satisfied and the third one is bounded waiting requirement is also met, right? So how to check with this first one is your mutual exclusion. So let's see to prove property one, we know that each PI enters its critical section only if either flag J is false or turn equal to I. I is zero and J is one. So if condition is false only then that will go into the critical section. Similarly, if both processes can be executing in their critical sections at the same time, then flag zero and flag one must be true. But with these two observation implies that P0 and P1 could not have successfully executed their while statements at about the same time, since the value of turn can be either zero or one, but cannot be both. You can put your flag value, means you can both give the signal to the teacher that you are interested to go to the critical section, but only one can enter in its critical section and which variable will decide? Your turn variable will decide because turn value either zero or one, right? So here you can see here flag zero and flag one both are true. Both are interested to go into critical section, but which will decide to go into the critical section when both students are interested? then turn will decide that either Chitranshu will go or Abhishek will go, right? So then hence one of the process, suppose PJ must have successfully executed the while statement, whereas PI had to execute at least one additional statement that is turn equal to J, right? So if one process is enter its critical section, then what will happen about the next process? It has to execute both the conditions because first one is always true because you have, you have already given the signal that you are interested to go into the critical section, but you have to check with this turn also. Only then if turn is false, then means you can enter into the critical section. So however, at that time flag J is true and turn equal to J. And this condition will persist as long as PJ is in critical section. As a result, mutual exclusion is preserved. What this statement is saying that I have told you earlier that if one PJ in running in its critical section, then PI has to wait because that turn value is not in its favor and that flag value is also true for that. So in this manner, mutual exclusion is implemented. Now let's check for other two properties uh, that process PI can be prevented from entering the critical section only if it is stuck into the while loop. As we have seen that how we are preventing to enter its critical section to stuck into that infinite while loop. It is just checking that condition. Is it false, false or not? So only if it is stuck into the while loop with the condition flag J is equal to true and turn equal to J. This loop is the only one possibility. So if PJ is not ready to enter its critical section, then flag J is false and PI can enter its critical section. So once PJ has done with this critical section and it is not interested to go again into the critical section, then it will put uh, its flags J as false, means he is not interested. Then what will happen? PI will get the chance to enter its critical section. And then PJ has said flag J is true and is also executing its while statement then either turn equal to Y or turn equal to J. This is the second scenario. If flag J has put its value as turn, means flag J is interested to go into the critical section and it is giving the signal by putting its flag J value as true. But it has to check with either turn is I or turn is J, whose turn it is. If turn equal to I, then PI will enter its critical section. Otherwise, PJ will enter its critical section. However, once PJ exit its critical section, it will reset flag J to false, allowing PI to enter its critical section. So if PJ reset flag J to true, it must also set turn to I. In this manner, PI does not change the value of variable turn while executing the while statement. PI will enter the critical section as you can see here that both the processes are getting this progress thing because uh, uh, P 
pi is putting the turn of pj and pj is putting the turn of pi so they are deciding who will go next after at most one entry by pj means after one maximum one entry done by pj pi will get the chance and after at most one entry by pi process pj will get the chance so in this manner bounded weighting is also implemented and uh, whatever written in here is i have explained you earlier when i explain you the code so this is very simple one these things you can write in your own words you don't have to mug all these things that of analysis as i put you these terms as analysis as you can see here you can write these things in your own words analysis of this peterson solution okay so you have to use words like you can use analysis you can use word inference anything so that your answer looks uh, different to your classmates at least suppose your if your roll number is 10 that your answer must be different than roll number 9 and roll number 11 right in this manner you will get maximum marks you have you understand the crux you understand everything then write it in your own words don't write the same thing that your classmates are writing you can do anything that looks your answer little different okay and you can see here i can use uh, I'm using red color, green color, just to highlight things to let you understand better. But you are students, you can use only black and blue pen, right? So use in the examination only black and blue pen. Do you get my point? So are we good with this Peterson solution? Everyone is on the same page. I will upload this class lecture note in the Google Classroom where you can revise also, okay? So are we good with this? So this is the solution to solve the concurrency problem with the help of software solution that is this is the code through code we are solving this next class we will discuss the hardware solution